So this brings us to phylum Brachiopoda. These guys are your lamp shells. Try not to confuse them with your mollusk. Brachiopods have dorsal ventral shells, meaning they open up and down instead of lateral or left and right shells like your mollusks do. They also contain a lophophore instead of a foot and mantle like a mollusk do. They attach to the substrate via stalks. And you can see here, this is the lophophore inside this lamp shell. So be careful on your lab practical. Make sure that you can distinguish between a lamp shell and a mollusk. And you'll be looking for those um, lophophores or a foot versus mantle, or a foot and mantle. So here is another brachiopod. You can clearly see the lophophore inside the lamp shell. So here is another brachiopod. You can clearly see the lophophore. And here's the structure. Um, so this would actually be turned on its side. This is the bottom and this is the top of your lamp shell. Here are the lophophores with its tentacles. Here's the pedicle that will attach it to the substrate. So here's your brachiopod versus clam. You'll see in your brachiopod, your lamp shell, you've got your lophophores and the shell opens up and down, so dorsal ventral shells, whereas in your mollusk you have a foot and a mantle and the shells open left to right, so these are bilateral shells. So and this brings us to phylum mollusca. These guys include your mollusk and your chitons, which is what you see in the picture here. This is actually a picture that was taken by Professor Dempsey in Hawaii. Um, he just happened to snap the picture as he was going by and he saw the chiton. And it wasn't until he got it back to the hotel room and pulled it up on the computer that he realized he had all of this, these nice solar flares coming off of the rock that just really kind of bring this picture out. So whenever you're out in the field, it's always a good idea to snap pictures any chance you get because you never know when you just might have a gem like this one come up unexpectedly. So here's your taxonomy for phylum mollusca. We've got five different classes. Class polyplacophore are your chitons, like the one we just saw in the picture before. Class bivalvia are your clams, your mollusk, and your oysters. Um, many of those guys are very yummy to eat. Gastropodia are your snails and your slugs and even your sea hares. Some people really enjoy to eat them. I have to admit, I've never tried escargot, so I guess can't knock it till you've tried it, right? Class cephalopoda are your octopus, your squid, and your cuttlefish. And I will admit, some of these guys are still pretty tasty. Um, and scaphopodia are your tusk shells. Tusk shells tend to be very... Um, Sessile, they tend to stay buried in the sand. So phylum mollusca, um, characteristics, they have a protective shell of calcium carbonate. Most of them are marine, but not all. A lot of them have a radula that's used to scrape up food. They have an open circulatory system, which means their heart pumps hemolymph out and it bathes all of the tissues and then it's sort of collected instead of having veins that it runs through. There are three main body parts in phylum mollusca. They have a, mu a muscular foot used for movement, a visceral mass that contains all of their organs, and a mantle that drapes over the visceral mass and secretes the shell. So class polyplacophore, these are your chitons. They have eight dorsal plates. Um, they have evolved from ancestors that started out with a single dorsal plate, and as they've evolved over the years, they've added more dorsal plates. These guys are marine, and they have a large muscular foot that they use for moving. They are herbivores, and they use their radula to graze. So this is one of Professor Dempsey's favorite pictures of a chiton probably because he took it himself out in Hawaii on the field studies trip. And I have to admit, it is a very nice picture. You've got a lot of nice photo flares coming off of the lava rock in the background and then the chitin in the middle. Here's some more chitons, show you some of the variation in this group. They can be very, very colorful chitons 
or very camouflaged chitons. Colorful again. And that brings us to class Gastropodia, your sea snails, land snails, and sea hares, and slugs as well. So class Gastropodia, like I said, they're your snails. They also include your nudie branches. Most of these guys have a coiled shell. And in their adult stage, they're technically asymmetrical, but they belong to bilateria because before they secrete that shell, they are actually bilateral. And when they secrete the shell, they do a torsion, which is a twisting, 180 degree twist of their visceral mass. It actually puts their anus um, above their head inside the shell. Not exactly where I would want that placed, but that's where it is. Um, and once they do that 180 degree twisting, they're no longer bilateral. But since they start out bilateral, they belong in the group. Um, many of these guys have distinct head and eyes. They have a radula for feeding and a foot for locomotion. And they either have gills or a vascularized mantle. So here's the basic anatomy of one of these guys. And you can see this portion here was originally going to be the tail end. And it did a 180 degree twist to sit up inside the gills. And that puts the anus here on top of the back. And once that 180 degree torsion happens, um, they're no longer bilateral. So here's a look at some of the aquatic ones. I like this one. He looks like a grumpy um, snail. Not all of these guys are harmless. This is the African giant snail. It's an invasive species that causes damage to crops and other plant life here in the United States. Um, it can also harbor parasitic diseases such as meningitis. Um, humans can contract the meningitis from this snail by eating raw or under. Here's a look at some of the aquatic um, slugs and snails. More aquatic ones. These guys are probably my favorite. They've got their neon on, ready for the black lights. Um, maybe they're going to a, a techno rave. This one looks like he's ready for Christmas. But as you can see, there's a lot of diversity in this group. You even have birthday cake flatworms, apparently. And we even have smiling sea slugs. Now we tend to think of snails as being very harmless. This is actually a cone snail. It is a marine critter and he is anything but harmless. Um, so I would exit the PowerPoint here and go to the folder and watch the video on cone snails. It's pretty interesting. And that brings us to class bivalvia and phylum mollusca. These are your oysters, your scallops. I am a huge fan of scallops. They're very yummy. Um, mussels and clams. These guys have two valves. Um, and they have in-current siphons and ex-current siphons. They are filter feeders. They pull water in through the in-current siphons. It flows over the gills. Food is caught up, um, is caught and uptaken into the mouth. And then that water flows out through the ex-current siphons. They do not have a radula, but they do have a web-shaped muscular foot for locomotion. Very poor cephalization in these guys. They really don't have a head. Um, but they do have adductor muscles, which are very strong and hold their shells tightly together. 
This is a jeweled sea scallop. Looks like something you might see out of Little Mermaid with all the little jewels up top and on the bottom. But you can see the nice lophophore in the middle of the scallop. Here's a clam. You can go out here and watch their two videos for clams. Um, both showing how they do locomotion with their foot. Very interesting videos. I recommend you watch them. More marine clams. And in this picture, you can actually see the two siphons. So here's one siphon and here's the other. One would be the end current, one would be the X current. I can't tell you which is which from this picture, but these are where it pulls in its water and um, runs it over its gills and then sends it back out. So here's another bivalve. Notice the two siphons. One's an in-current and one's an X-current siphon. Here are the microscopic um, clams. These would be very early larval stages. The very early larval stages of clams are actually parasitic to fish. They will attach to the gills and hang on for a ride. Um, and then as they start to mature, they'll fall off and float down to the bottom and find a location for their more permanent home. Here's your clam anatomy. That's what you probably went over in lab. So you've got your foot here. This is the mantle that secretes the shell. Here's your in-current siphon. Water flows in it over the gills to oxygenate them. Food particles are uptaken by the mouth, which is covered by palp on either side. Food will then travel into the stomach which is surrounded by the digestive gland and then through the intestines and out the anus. The water that was taken in through the in-current siphon will flow out the ex-current siphon taking any waste products from the anus along with it. And they also have a heart here. It's an open circulatory system. And here are the adductor muscles. You have a posterior and an anterior. These are very strong muscles that hold the two halves of the shelf together. Um, in order to dissect it, you will have to cut these muscles um, by slipping your blade in between the two shells, snip those muscles, and then the shell will open up. These are zebra mussels. This is actually an invasive species. It's a problem we're having a lot here in Texas. Zebra mussels get into a lake and they change the water clarity significantly because they're fil filter feeders. Um, we also have an issue with them blocking up our water pipes that are coming out of these lakes. They get inside the pipes and they clog them up. Um, and they outcompete our native mussels. And the larval stages of these mussels, they reproduce very rapidly, um, can actually hurt the fish populations because if too many of them get on the gills of a fish, it'll actually cause the fish to suffocate. So they're changing our ponds and lakes in this area significantly. And the way these guys are carried from one lake to another is usually by boats. So if you're a boater, these guys are the reasons you need to dry your boat off well at each time after you use it um, and empty any of the reserve tanks completely. And then um, if you don't let it air dry for a long time in between uses, you need to power hose down, power wash the outside of it down so that you're not taking zebra mussels from one lake and introducing them into a new lake. Um, if you don't drain and dry your boats afterwards now, Texas Parks and Wildlife can actually write you a ticket for it. And from what I understand, the tickets are not cheap, but they're trying to prevent these guys from spreading. Um, they came in through Lake Ray Roberts and they've now been transferred to Lake Louisville. We're trying to prevent their spread further south.